Hey there everyone, it's David Graham, Cooper Systems Engineer for Atmos. Uh, just give you a heads up, I got some really cool toys today. Um, Cisco C200 M1 servers. So, give you a quick hardware tour, show you kind of what's in the box, and some of the cool little feature I discovered along the way. Alright, let's dive in. So here is an overview of the Cisco C200. So this is the back side, and that's the front side. Let's zoom in a little bit here. So standard rack ears, push mounts, uh, four three and a half inch drives. In this case, the uh, drives are SATA 250 gig, manufactured by Seagate. Uh, I believe I got DVDs for these, so just be careful. These things are flush with the top edge, and uh, you can pull them off. Be careful of that. Um, console, there's a breakout cable for uh, that Cisco's included in there. I'll see if I can cover that in a minute. Uh, reset switch, mostly flush mount. <laughs> PSU, active, uh, memory CPU, network, um, system state. Uh, a couple buttons off to determine the functionality on. So that's the front side. Um, like I said, this will be a dongle that you'll use for uh, keyboard video mounts, I believe. Um, we'll go over to the back side real quick. Dual redundant power supplies, absolutely required for everything that I do, like I said before with our R610s. Um, dedicated IPMI, KVM, uh, IPMI port, or KVM port if you will. Uh, two USB 2.0s, looks like there's a back reset switch as well, right? out there. Uh, video, obviously, serial. Kind of cool to see serial still included, even though I would argue its uh, efficacy is limited. And 2 by uh, gigabit Ethernet uh, next. You have a support for a low profile um, by 8 slot. I believe it's by 8. And then you also have a full length, full, well, sorry, half length still. Um, Standard PCI Express by 16. Now, here's a little funny, uh, funny aside, right? So if you look here, four-pin auxiliary power. Graphics cards? Who knows? Anyway, a um, little bit of a tour of the internals. We have a some sort of component mounting area. This is similar to what you find on Intel 5520 VI boards. Um, who knows? Might be a little bit of hook there. And also, if you can see here, there is a USB port. Now, I've been told by a bird that you could potentially put a USB stick there that could hold your ESX 4i images. I'm just saying. So, that's kind of a cool thing. Um, six DIMM slots per um, per processor. In this case, we're using 4 gig DIMM, so 48 gigs total loadout. These are Intel 5520s, so dual quad cores with uh, additional four threads uh, hyper threading. Uh, obviously, the fan complex here. I'll flip over to the other box, which is facing, so we can cover the front of the box. All right. So, like I said, fan complex. We got. Uh, looks like it's a SATA DVD drive. So this connects out to the DVD drive up front. Um, in this case, four serial ATA. You can see here that there is a multi-lane um, multi-lane cable. So we're doing you know SATA from the board using multi-lane four by four by multi-lane. Um, excuse me. Outside of that, I mean, fairly standard. You know, obviously PSU compound right there. Uh, but overall, pretty uh, pretty decent looking box. Uh, again, I think you know for for my uses, this slot right here is going to be more than likely a quad port neck card provided by uh, our buddies at over at uh, NetZen. NetZen, I'm sorry, um, and, or QLogic as, as as they are now. And then over here on this side, you know, we're probably going to be looking at something like a, a QLogic 8100 series or uh, new Emulex um, UCNAs, which if you hold on with me one moment, we'll, we'll test fit that. How's that sound? So, new Emulex UCNA. Nice profile, 2x10 gig FCOE ports, optical, nice heatsink, robust. 
So good profile, looks like it's going to fit in there without any clearance issues, so let's go install it. We'll go on this side since I already have this one facing back to me. So, screwdriver, screwdriver, screwdriver. By the way, this is not a toolless chassis by any stretch of the imagination, so be, be, be forewarned that you're going to need to uninstall several screws, little ones at that. So, let's put this over here. There's that. So that bracket comes out completely. Hold on a sec. You can look at me while I'm doing this. Oh, that's it. Just for illustration purposes, I'm just going to stick it back in without screwing it in. All right, so PCI slots, fit that in there, fit that in there, and give it a nice little shove down, and there we go. Hey, look at that! What do you know? I've now got 20 gigs of bandwidth in and out of the box. Woohoo! So I'll keep you apprised more and more as we go through this. Uh, I think I was talking about the dongle cable. So let's see what we got in the documentation package. Hold on. All right. Big warning. Unified computing system, utilities, and drivers. Nice. And then here's the uh, here's the dongle that fits. So you can see the end will fit over on, on top of this thing right here. And keyboard, serial, sorry, two USB, video, and serial. So looks like we accomplished it. Anyway, thanks for popping along. Uh, like I said, this is a great little chassis. It's got a good footprint. One new pizza boxes are awesome. Uh, ESXi is going on top of all this stuff, ESX4i at that. Um, things to be aware of, uh, two, only two onboard gig ports, not that bad, but a dedicated KPM IPMI port. And this is not a toolless chassis, so you're going to need a screwdriver for installing peripheral cards, even for getting into the top. Alright, look forward to seeing you at Flickrdown.com. Bye.